Hello, my beautiful wildflowers. How are you today? Alexis here with Oat Modesty. Today, I want to have a heart to heart talk with you about cosmetic safety and how to keep yourself safe and how to keep your products safe. So, if you're interested in hearing more about that, please stay tuned. <music> Okay, well thank you for joining me today. Today I really want to have the conversation that I've been wanting to have for a while now. And that's on cosmetic safety. And today the video will be split in two sections. First, I want to talk to you about the safety and why it's so important to do the things that I'm going to talk to you about and teach you about. And the second part is showing you exactly how to take care of your cosmetics and the shelf life of your cosmetics, okay? And so without further ado, I'm going to get into it. And you'll see me looking down. That's because I have my computer down here because I did put together a presentation so that way I can follow it in a coherent manner because it's important that I don't miss anything in this, right? And before I get started, I just want to tell you this piece of it. And so some people may say, you know, how are you qualified to talk about this? What do you know about this? And so let me make sure I get this straight. So I am a registered nurse and with over 20 years of experience in acute care settings. I spent two of those years as an infection prevention and control nurse. Okay. And um, also I had, you know, feet and boots on the ground, as they say, and I was on the front lines of infection control. And I seen many, or I should say, I see many, no, I, I have seen many uh, conditions that contribute to beauty products. Not only that, maybe bathing products and things like that. And so I am experienced in that piece. And also I spent another eight years as the director of risk management. And currently I serve as the senior program manager for patient safety in a large academic medical center uh, here in Northern California. So I am qualified to talk about this and I just want to put it out there. But if you hear other things, if you see other things, I do like feedback. I love dialogue because I'm still learning continuously every day, right? And so I really like that and I never get offended when people say, well, but I heard this and I heard that. And either I'm going to say, well, let me research it and get back to you. Or I'm going to say, no, that's a mess because, and I'll give you resources. And at the end of the uh, video, you can check the resources and I do give you some, I give you a couple of those links and uh, one of them is going to be Lee, uh, one of them. <laughs> I can't speak today. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, one will lead you to a list of expiration dates for the various um, cosmetics. And the other one, uh, what does it lead you to? Something good, though. It's a PDF, I believe, or it's a website on both of them. And so check them out. And um, at the end of the presentation, I will go ahead and let you know who I need to credit this to because... All of this needs to be credited to the people who did the research, okay? And so without further ado, uh, let me get started. Okay, so what kind of products am I going to be talking about today? Anything that has to do with cosmetics. I did not add um, like bath aids and things like that here today because otherwise it would have been like unmanageable, but I can work on those as well. So we're looking at eye products, lip products, face products, brushes, and other tools. And what do I mean by other tools? I mean like tweezers and as well as eyelash curlers and any other thing that you use for your beauty routine will fall under the tools. And I mean, this is not an all exhaustive list because there's no way I can capture everything, but this is what people use primarily on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And so why worry about this? Why disinfect things? Why, you know, spray the palettes? Why do that? Number one, you want to prevent infection. Okay. And if you can imagine, I don't know if you know what a Petri dish is, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen right here. And, um, that is a, a dish that is filled with auger, which is a growth medium. 
And what they do is they take like, let's say you want to know what's on your hands when you don't uh, wash your hands and you just tap your hands into that dish and then they put it into incubation. In other words, they warm it up and then you see those little white fuzzy dots. They're called colonies. And what are they colonies of? They're colonies of bacteria. Yes. And so even though you're not incubating uh, you know, your makeup, every time you stick your fingers in there, guess what? Yep. It's a Petri dish. And so this is one of the reasons. Second reason why you want to disinfect your cosmetics is for longevity. You want your cosmetics to last and throw away the things that you know you cannot disinfect and just, you know, be knowledgeable about, you know, the things that you're using on your face. And then the last thing was to, uh, oh, flawless, flawless makeup. When makeup gets old, I don't know about you, but I know when my stuff starts to get a little bit old because then they don't act like they used to. And the first things that is really apparent is your mascara, right? They start to clump, they start doing funky stuff. I mean, that happens to me within the six months that it's good for. Um, so imagine if you take it, some people have these things for years, like a year or two. I'm like, are you kidding me? So you know, that's another reason why. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about the uh, photos that you see. And um, the first photo you see there, there's three frames, right? Uh, one is the eyes, then the lips, and then the third eyes. The first one with the nice blue eyes, that's called conjunctivitis. That is an inflammation of the eyes from putting some kind of a bacteria laden product or your fingers with bacteria near your eyes. And all of these three are cosmetically related. And um, the reference of these, um, it comes from the internet, but it is from studies and research um, studies. And I will list them uh, in the uh, box for you and the bottom and the details. And so the first one, like I said, is a uh, conjunctivitis, which is inflammation of your eyes. And this is a controlled conjunctivitis. And I will show you one in the future here where it is not. And it could become bad enough where you lose your eyesight if it's not taken care of. And these are most of the time bacterial infections. And so if you treat them, it is treatable and you will be cured with antibiotic eye drops or maybe oral antibiotics, depending on how bad the infection is but it is reversible uh, but you don't want to start with this because then it could get really bad okay and then the second one you see in the middle that is herpes simplex and that comes from sharing lipsticks uh, sharing sponges maybe for cosmetics or being you know somebody using dirty sponges on you if you're going out there to get your makeup done okay and also the samples, you know, the samples, not samples, but what is it? Demos, demos and testers. And I never, ever, ever, I don't care if I watch the Mac lady dip it in alcohol and hand it to me. I will never put that on my face. Um, you, you know, and it's not suggested that you do. And the thing about herpes, like in the middle, that is a gift that will keep on giving. There is no cure. That is a virus. And anytime you get in the, um, the thing that makes it really inflame is stress. So if you're ever put under stress or you're, you're, you know, in a stressful situation that will erupt out of nowhere. And so, as I say, this is not something you ever want to get. So it's not worth, you know, trying um, a demo or whatever it is. So just really be careful. And also another hint about um, uh, to getting your makeup done. I know like at the Mac counter, they love um, to do makeup for you because they want you to buy their stuff. But when I go and have my makeup done for like a very, very special occasion, which is very rare, I take my own makeup and I take my own tools. I don't let them touch me with their tools. So that's just a little helpful hint, okay? And then the third one there is also, it's almost like a sty, right? Sty in the eye, but this is actually um, an infection. It is, again, a bacterial infection that occurred probably, you know, the location, by the location of it, it's either an eyeliner or eyelash curler or something like that. But as you notice, this is isolated. But even though it's isolated, these are very painful. And the thing is, if you don't get this taken care of, it can spread to the rest of the eyes and you're not having a good day. Okay, and next, here is the one that um, I wanted to talk to you about. This is a severe reaction from a, a bacterial infection. Um, this, this eyes here, this is very bad. Um, this is to a point where you can really lose your sight. 
And so this is what you, what can happen. And this, what I understand is from eyeshadow. And so this is what was, um, uh, the caption for that one. And so, you know, sharing makeup, using other people's brushes or not washing your brushes at all. This is what you're going to be looking at. So be very careful. And then this one here, you might have seen this because um, I think she's um, she's quite famous now after this. She told her story, actually, what happened. And um, what happened here is unwashed makeup, uh, utensils, brushes. Uh, she believes that it started when she actually scratched herself with her spoolie, her eyebrow spoolie, and, and it's not something that she used to wash on a regular basis. And next thing you know, I mean, there was, she thought it was like a pimple, and then it was very, very painful. Next thing you know, it just, boom, spread all to her face. She had a complete facial cellulitis and so she had to be medically treated for this she's okay now not sure um, if there's any you know scars or anything like that I've not seen any pictures of her afterwards but this is from a dirty spoolie okay who would have thought right and then the final one here, this one is not from a um, dirty, um, you know, makeup or cosmetic, but it is from a cosmetic. And this is a study that was done, actually, I believe in UK, and I'll put the reference um, below. This is a woman who spent years never washing her mascara off correctly. And so she would go to bed with it and she would, um, you know, sleep with it. And this, what you're seeing is embedded mascara inside the eyes. And how she discovered it was that she felt like there was sand in her eyes. And so she went to the, the doctors and the, actually the doctor thought, okay, yeah, this is some kind of inflammation. But when they actually took a look and biopsied these um, dots, their mascara. It is an embedded mascara. This is from going to bed without taking your makeup off, ladies. So guess what? You guys need to take your makeup off. Okay. And this, and you should never go to sleep with makeup on. And you know, it, sometimes you're so, so tired and I've had those days, but you know what? I find that extra ump to get that makeup off before I go to bed. So keep that in mind. Okay. So I know that was a little bit graphic, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood and you guys could see, you know, picture speaks a thousand words. And you know, next time you think you're not going to want to wash your brush or, you know, you're going to stick your hand in the palette and not really spray it or take care of it. Maybe these pictures will surface in your mind and, and, and it'll save you. Okay. So this is all that matters that you guys stay safe. And so, and, um, I also want to talk about the studies, right? I need to put on my glasses because I'm going to read to you because I don't want to misrepresent this, but a new study has revealed that the majority of open and use makeup products such as lip gloss, mascara, and blending sponges are contaminated with potentially dangerous bacteria such as E. coli and staphylococci. E. coli is also the same thing that's in beef uh, that kills people, right? And E. coli comes from the stool of animals. And a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, beef, you see it in beef, you know, the spinach that got contaminated by E. coli, but also guess where E. coli lives? In our poop. I know that sounds really gross, but these are bacteria that's designed to really help you. And E. coli actually in its environment is there to protect your gut. Okay. And also develop, it also makes vitamin K. A lot of people don't know that without E. coli, you have no vitamin K and you say vitamin K, what's that? What well, without vitamin K, you will not clot your blood. So you'll be bleeding to death. Got it? So there is a function, but when you take it out of its environment in your hands or anything like that, I know that sounds gross. And then you go put on your makeup and guess what? You just contaminated your makeup. Okay. So it is what it is. And staphylococcus, especially the beta staph staphylococcus, that is very bad. People die from that and lose a lot of um, skin from that. And I'll share a story with you later if I remember about that one. Okay. And also um, the research published today in the Journal of Applied Microbiology by researchers at Aston University in the UK, they found that nine out of 10 products tested contain bacteria capable of causing illnesses such as skin infections and even blood poisoning if used near the eyes, mouth, cut, or grazed skin. So that the picture that I just showed you of the girl, she grazed her skin, um, a little small micro scratch that she didn't know that was there caused by her spoolie. 
and a dirty spoolie. What a perfect setup. Okay, this is what they're talking about. And then the other one, okay, so this is from the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, which is the Federal Food and Drug Administration. And they talk about how microorganisms get into cosmetics. It's not just from your hands. So, and this is the reason why I'm really picky about where the cosmetics are produced and where it's made. And it's not because I have prejudices, because I don't, of all the people, I do not. I love everybody equally. Um, but... Um, sometimes there are places that has questionable hygienic practices and there's a history of seeing unhygienic uh, merchandise products come out of these regions or areas. So I try to avoid those areas. And this is FDA found the same thing. So this is what they had to say. They come, some of the ways cosmetics may become contaminated with bacteria or fungi are contaminated raw material, water, or other ingredients to make the cosmetics poor manufacturing conditions yeah there's no oversight in some of some of the countries about how they you know produce these things ingredients that encourage growth of microorganisms without an effective preservative system i know everybody's like i don't like paraben paraben is a very effective uh preservative and if you really look at the research behind it paraben is not bad it's just the cosmetic companies and everything else they're you know it's a marketing word it's without paraben so they're going to mark it up a little more yeah they're putting less stuff in there but they're going to charge you more because it has that keyword no paraben so do some research behind it you you'll be surprised at what you find out about paraben okay and um, also packaging that doesn't protect a product adequately and there's some you know there's some things out there that um like you open a cream and it's it doesn't seal properly or there's you know it's the container is suboptimal and that can also lead to product deterioration and poor shipping or storage conditions i mean sometimes you know these things come from wherever it comes from sits in a warehouse and a perfect medium of heat and what did i tell you about petri dishes how do they make the organisms grow they put it in a warmer okay imagine if you have if you mix the poor production and poor water that they use and then they use poor storing methods guess what you just did yeah your makeup or whatever it is became a petri dish and you know what you're not gonna see it these are microorganisms unless they've already had sufficient time to really bloom but it may be blooming you just it's not available to the naked eye Okay, and then the last one, which is what we have control over, 100% control over, is consumer use, such as the need to dip fingers into the product. How many times do you put your fingers into the, um, the cream or lotion? Yeah, I don't. I never put my fingers in there. I have a special spatula, makeup cosmetic spatula that I use, and I wash it each time. So really important. Okay, things to think about. And okay, moving on. Okay, what makeup can I disinfect, right? And this is a list that I really had to put together. Um, so that way, it, you know, because some things you can't disinfect it. I'm sorry, you just can't. You just have to throw it away, okay? And so I'm going to give you a real quick, like I said, again, this is not a all exhaustive list. So don't say, don't say to yourself, oh, she didn't mention that. So it must be okay. No, 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 no. These are just things that we use commonly, okay? And now uh, things that you can can disinfect is makeup brushes makeup sponges other makeup applying um uh, like spatulas um cur eyelash curlers okay um eyeshadow palettes yes you can you can disinfect it uh powder foundations bronzers blushes and highlighters you can disinfect as long as they're powder okay and also pencil eyeliners liner pencils and some lipsticks okay and depends on um, how it's packaged. And so for the most part, uh, the types of products that are relatively clean, if you haven't touched the applicator to the skin, you really don't have to disinfect them. And those things are products that are in a pump, right? Like, um, for example, here. As long as I don't touch this piece here, or, you know, spit on it, breathe on it, I'm okay. Because you're, and then also don't touch it with your hand. You know, pump it from, at the distance okay like so 
And so those things you won't typically need to disinfect. And also products in a squeeze tube or a bottle, as long as when you squeeze it, you squeeze it into the hand um, or eye, uh, anything with the eyedropper. If you drop it into your um, hand, that's okay. But how many commercials have I seen where they go, and they touch it to the face, dot, 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 dot. I see those uh, 30 second or 60 second um uh, what is that stories facebook stories and um instagram stories where they're like this with the foundation or lotion and they're touching it to their skin no don't do that okay otherwise you're gonna have to throw it away a lot quicker than you need to okay take my word for it okay and so but there are types of products that you really can't um disinfect okay and those are liquid eyeliners mascara liquid lipsticks uh, lip glosses, pomades, things that like, what I mean by pomade is like for your eyebrows. So you've ever seen the um, uh, Anastasia where you have the, it's in a, like a gel inside of a container. Why am I telling you about it when I have one somewhere here? Hmm, maybe I don't anymore. I might, I might have thrown it away because it did get beyond that time. But anyway, it's in a container about like kind of sort of like this. This is not it, but it comes like this. And then you open it and you dip your brush into it. You, yeah, you cannot disinfect that. And same with the liner, like the gel liners, where you dip your brush into it and use it. No, you need to throw those away, okay? And so, and I'll also give you how long these are good for. And I'm also going to give you resource um, and the details where you can click on a website and give you the whole list, okay? And I will also credit the people that, you know, came up with those lists. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel if you have to? And so, you know, these things are out there. So what I'm doing is I am kind of making it easy for you guys, simplify it, put it in priorities, but the information is already out there. I did not make this stuff up. Take my word for it. I'm not that smart, not even me. So anyway, so important details, okay? And this I came up with. <laughs> okay, never share your makeup, but that's also out there. But I, you know, this list I got from my head, but it's probably because I read it somewhere at one time in my life. Okay, so never share your makeup, especially eye makeup with others. Do not, and young girls are famous for this. Do not, and this is the reason why I tell my daughter when I give her all these palettes, she says, I'm gonna share. I say, yeah, whatever you share, you give it to them. You don't take it back, okay? And so this is very important. And number two, remember to always wash your makeup brushes regularly. Regularly means once a week. Sometimes people say, oh, twice a week, uh, um, uh, once every two weeks. No, once a week. And I'm gonna show you. You see these brushes? These are my this week's wash. And so on Saturdays, I actually wash my brushes, or on Sundays. And so that's what's getting washed today. And during the week though, what I do is I actually use a makeup cleaner each time. And this kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Stop it, stop it. So anyway, okay. And so, and also replace your eye makeup every three months or immediately if you have an eye infection. In other words, you get an eye infection, maybe not even related to that. Maybe you touched something and rubbed your eye and got pink eye. That's called conjunctivitis. And you didn't realize it and you're putting on your mascara. You know what? And then after you get a kind of like inflammation, throw it away. I don't care. It costs you $30 or $40. Throw it away. Your eyesight's more important. Okay, and also pay attention to expiration dates. Mascara can promote the growth of bacteria and viruses. And you don't want it. No, you don't. And also, another piece too, real quick. Um, where can you find expiration? Some people will look, 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 and look for, there's no expiration date. Yeah, no, you're not going to find it like that. So hold on one second. Okay, here's one right here. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, 18 months, okay. Now, every box, this is required. If you're going to sell it in the United States, it is required that you have this. And it's this little sign here. I don't know. Can you see that here? Where it says 18 months. I'm going to see if I can edit it. Um, because not everybody knows this, which, is, which was hard for me to believe. But this says 18 months and you see the jar that's open. That means from the day that you open this product, it's good for 18 months. That's your expiration date. And this is lipstick, so that makes sense because they're good to about two years. And actually, you can extend the life if you do truly, truly on a regular uh, basis 
it disinfect. Okay, so and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, and so that's what I mean by pay attention to the dates. And also for eye makeup, I'm a little creeped out about that. So because I've seen so much out there and, you know, the infections and it's really not a nice thing. So I keep it about three months and it's not completely full. But I do, I mean, completely full. It's not completely empty, but I do throw it out. And I'm going to teach you how you can actually minimize that piece too. You know, what do you need, to, what can you do to, you know, that way you're not throwing so much stuff away. Okay. And so really quick, I'm going to go over the time. I'm just going to read it to you right here. The shelf life. And this is approximate shelf life. Okay. And so, eggy deggy, concealer is good for one year. Cream blush, one year. Eyeliner three months eyeliner pencil two years and this is eyeliner pencil that you sharpen not the one that you roll up okay okay so because you can sharpen off the um the parts that touches your eyes that's why okay eyeshadow one year foundation one year lip balm one to five years how is that possible okay yeah uh i'm i'm, I'm gonna say no i'm gonna say one year and lip gloss one year lipstick two years liquid eyeliner three months that's like mascara yeah liquid eyeliner okay because it's a very highly grow growth medium and mascara three months nail polish one year and powder blush two years and things that are powder you could probably stretch it another year or so if you are this is to say this is a regular consumers who is not um, you know, disinfecting their makeup. These are the people who, you know, they, they have no clue. They're just using, using, using. Well, if you're not disinfecting your eyeshadow palettes, you do have to follow this one year, but you can really stretch it if you're doing it properly and you're doing it regularly on a schedule maintenance. So what I would recommend you to do is have a PM, preventive maintenance. Okay. And then have a list of, you know, when you disinfect it and things like that. Okay. That's that. Oh, and another thing I almost forgot and expiration dates for natural products are going to be a lot shorter, a lot shorter. And if it's not, you need to make sure that you make it shorter. And that, that should be between three to six months. And that's on all natural products that contain no preservatives. Okay. If it has no preservatives, you need to get rid of it no later than six months. Okay. All righty then. Okay. Now we will be going into the demo part of it, how to decontaminate. Did I use a medical word? Yeah, I did. We call it decontaminate. Sorry about that. Disinfect. I gotta be a little bit friendly. Decontaminate. You know, it sounds like, oh my God, it's the plague. Let's decontaminate. But no, but this is how we, that, that's medical speak, right? Uh, it means the same thing. And so what you will be needing is you will need a bottle of 70% rubbing alcohol, okay? Very important. There's some misinformation out there. And there's one actually done, I think a couple of years ago by BoxyCharm, somebody, and it's put out by BoxyCharm that say use 90% higher, the better. Eh, wrong answer. Take it from an infection preventionist that has hospital experience in infection prevention. 90% alcohol is way too high. Why? Because higher the alcohol, the quicker the evaporation. And the reason why we use 70% in medicine and sometimes 65% is the dwell time. So what is dwell time? That's the time that the product or the alcohol needs to remain on a surface to properly disinfect. Okay. And so really important 90%. Yeah. No go. If you had, if you have no choice because now you can't find 70% with this COVID thing, uh, you know, okay. 90% it's better than nothing. But as soon as you could get the 70%, get the 70%. Okay. And so, and another thing too, you will need cotton swabs or rounds, or no, cotton swabs and rounds and either a shot glass or a little glass like this. And this is a glass that I don't drink out of it. This is like, and make sure the shot glass that you use, you're not using for actually doing shots that you have it for this purpose only. Okay, and the other thing that you are going to need is um, paper towels or a very clean towel that's you only use this for. Um, you only use this for. 
that you use only for this purposes, okay? And another thing before I forget, um, this is a Cinema Secrets Pro Cosmetic Wash, okay? And the reason why I don't wash my um, brushes every single day is because this is what I use after every single makeup session that I record or I put on. Um, you notice it kills 99.9% um, of the bacteria. And of course this does have alcohol in it and the proper amount of alcohol. And so I use this on a daily basis, but, um, you know, I always like to get it really clean with soap and water because that's, that is the gold standard is getting in there with soap and water and cleaning the brushes with it. So this is what I do. And so now we will go ahead and learn how to do this. And then I will kind of go over other things at the end uh, because there's a couple of things that I want to give you other information, but I don't want you to get bored with all this dot didactic. So let's just go ahead and um, try this. Okay. So another thing you're going to need, um, I should have mentioned it is a, a spray bottle. And I like these amber glass spray bottles. Um, I feel more comfortable with these. I get it. The, you know, the alcohol comes in clear container that is, plastic but I like this and also remember especially if you have kids in a house label your bottles to say what it is because you know what I don't remember sometimes what I put in there unless I label it because I do have like spray and leave-in hair conditioners for this and I don't want to spray alcohol in my head that would be not good and so you know make sure you label your bottle and so what I did this morning was I transferred as you notice a little bit missing here into this bottle for you Okay, and so let's get started. Okay, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you how to disinfect this. Is an old one, and here it is, and it's dirty. Okay, and I don't use it anymore. That's the reason why I don't use this. This is just for my, you know, I I don't know. I guess sentimental because this is actually the palette that started it all. So <laughs> it is what it is. And so what I like to do, first of all, is I take the alcohol, spray alcohol, and just kind of spray it here. Okay. And then I also like to get a little bit of alcohol sprayed onto the Q-tip. Okay. And what I do is I take the round and I clean around, I clean around Oops. I clean around the um, container, okay? So let me see, let me do it this way. Wow, this is really dirty. And then, and then what I'll do is I'll try to wipe the sides here and the parts that I cannot get, I sprayed the alcohol on here. And so I'm going to, and a lot of people actually will say to use um, makeup remover. I don't like to do that because I don't know. I mean, you're already spraying alcohol on it. Just use alcohol. Okay. And this is just to kind of get the dust out. And you, and you see the dirt here. Yeah, you're just getting the dust out is all you're doing. I mean, this is, I mean, if you spray the whole thing, it's really not necessary. You can wipe it afterwards. But what did I tell you about dwell time? You don't want to wipe it off, right? And so there we go. And then you can also go into the inside of it. Okay, so you see? And then next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and I don't want to spray my camera, so I got to be really careful. Take your spray bottle and kind of then make it a little bit, I guess, six to eight inches and just spray, just spray. It's okay. Okay. It's going to survive. Alrighty then. Now I got it all over the mirror. Okay. I'm just going to wipe this piece because it's st still staying wet. You see that? It's not like I dried it. I just got the drips off. Okay. And then what you want to do now is you want to put this aside. And what I do is I leave it open and you won't be able to use this for like half a day because I really drenched it good. And actually I will drench it again the second time. So, because I'm just paranoid like that. And then, so I want to make sure I got it. And so I will spray again. 
And then so what I do is I, oh, I got a cut. God, that's a quick way to find your cut. Um, so what I'll do is lay this aside and that's it. Actually, that is it. How easy is that? Why people, why aren't people doing this? Okay. So, alrighty then I'll put that aside. And now how do you, uh, do lipstick, right? Hmm. How do you do lipstick and lipstick only takes between 30 seconds and, uh, let's see, let me find a lipstick. 30 seconds and you know what I'll do this um, because yeah lipstick takes between 30 seconds and two minutes so here I have my uh, lip not lip gloss but this is not lipstick either but this is a uh, lip balm and then so here it is and one thing I like to do is I take the alcohol and what I'll do is I will pour please don't let me spill any Okay, just a little bit to the bottom like this. And alcohol is cheap, people. Don't be cheap. And another thing too, no, you cannot use vodka. So, I guess you could if you're, you know, you're really desperate. But yeah, no, not suggested. So what you want to do is first, I will dip. Q-tip. Okay. And then I will take the cap. And I'll put this in the cap. And I'm going to swirl it in there and just really get in there and clean it. Yep. And then I will take another round and dip it in there a little bit. Ooh, that's a lot. And then I'm going to clean the outside of it. Oh, and by the way, I always wash my hands right before I put on makeup. Always, always. Okay. It's because it's a habit that I've gotten to. And then after that, what you can do is you take this and you clean the outside. The outside. Okay. And what I like to do at this point is I like to kind of bring it down because I don't want to break it. And just where my lips touched, there's alcohol here, right? So I'm going to rub it like this with alcohol. Then I'm going to, again, bring the tube up, bring it all the way out. And then what I'm going to do is, yep, you got it. Boom. Now it's going to sit there while I do something. Do, 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 do. Okay, it's been two minutes. I'm going to remove this. Look, perfectly, it's perfectly shaped. It didn't melt. A lot of people say, well, yeah, yeah, it's going to melt. And by the way, you can't use this for the next 15 minutes. And it is okay for the alcohol to run down. Matter of fact, that's optimal, okay? And, and so don't start wiping it off now. And what you want to do is put this aside, fully retracted, right? And it's sometimes I go like this, just saying, you know, because let the alcohol kind of sink in there. So, and then I leave it aside for 15 minutes. And when it evaporates, that's it easy peasy okay and so now we learn to do what do we learn to do oh um the lipstick and the palette right and that's it that's all we did yeah and then so as far as um i'm not going to show you exactly how to do the um the brushes uh because it's going to take soap and water but i can tell you about it okay so like this right and and this is metal, by the way. So um, these uh, simple, all I do is I put in my hand soap, okay? And make sure that this is wet. And I swirl, swirl, swirl and rinse and then do it again until I don't see the color anymore. And then that's it. And then what I do is I really do this and get all the water out. And then I lay it flat, Okay, don't do this because then the water's going to get trapped in here and I'm trapped water is even worse than, you know, uh, anything else. And so, and also if you really wanted to, um, you know, when it's drying, you can take this and not soak it, but just quickly choo -choo -choo, and, you know, just real quick and let it after it's dry and, you know, double sanitize it. There's nothing that says you can't do that, but you have to make sure though that it's completely dry before you use it because you don't want alcohol all over your face. Okay. And same thing with the, um, eye makeup brushes like this, you know, I use this today to get this beautiful look.
<laughs> anyway, um, it, it's dirty. And the reason why I didn't clean it with my, you know, with my 99.9% um, kills the bacteria liquid is because I know I'm going to wash it. So I said, you know, why, why waste it? And so that's how you would do that. And the other one is the... Do, 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 do. Okay, this is not that hard. All you do is remove the rubber. I'm going to do it right now. You remove the rubber piece of it, you see? You see how dirty that is? And this is like, I do this every week. It's still, you know? And then you have, you know, this, this is what's left. Don't lose the rubber part. And then you want to take like an alcohol round and you can go ahead and wipe, wipe this like this, right? See, I do clean it well. It's not that much on there. I mean, I've seen people do this and it come off like, like, like they just stuck the cotton round into the chimney. So anyway, I do that first, first, first. That's not all I do. That's what I do first. And then it's going to sit here again for two minutes. Okay. I'm going to let it sit for two minutes. And meanwhile, what I do is I get a clean Q-tip, dip it into the alcohol, and then my little rubber piece, I'm going to clean it. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to clean it. Okie dokie. And you just kind of, you know, rub it and then get it really good. Or you know what you can do? You can actually wash it with soap and water if you want. But I, I want it to dry, you know, so I can put this back. So, alrighty then. Okay, fast forward. Beauty of editing. It's been two minutes, so I'm going to take this out and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Why? Because it's been soaking for two minutes, right? So it already had its optimal dwell time. But if you're spraying it onto a surface, it's not dwelling, okay? So make sure you know the difference. And then what you do is you put it back and then I always have a problem with this part of it. Okay, perfect and nice and new and shiny. And I know I'm not going to get anything, any bugs. And then next, same thing with your tweezers. I've already done these. I do these every time I use them. And so I don't need to do them. But same thing. You drop it into the alcohol. You let it soak for two minutes. And that's it. Okay. And that is that. And let's see, what else do I need to tell you guys about? Okay. And so I think I wanted to give you some, oh, and I almost forgot, see, sorry. Same thing with um, sharpener. I actually didn't clean this on purpose so I could show you guys. Okay, this is a pencil sharpener. And so, I mean, when you're sharpening pencils, uh, the cooties are going to get left behind here. So really important that you sanitize this. And so what I like to do with this is actually, I first, I like to dip a cotton and um, cotton swab into um, the alcohol and just really clean it, you know? I mean, physically clean it and get, get into those little nitty gritty areas like this, yeah. Be careful, don't stick your finger in there because then you cut your finger, okay? Okay, and then you wanna put it in here and kind of swirl it around until you come away with a clean cotton. See, look at this mess. As you notice, it's only one color. It means I only sharpen one pencil with it before I said, well, I'm going to hold it and wait until I need to do this. And so once you do this, again, I drop it into the alcohol. Bloom. And then I just wait for it to brew for about, oh, I wait for it to sanitize. So again, two minutes, take it out and I let it sit. Okay, that's that. And so what else? What else? I want to make sure I don't miss anything, guys. And then if I do, we can always do this again. And so, um, as I said again, let's recap. Disinfect after each use with daily disinfectant for the brushes. And then wash the brushes with soap and water once a week. And it's very important to let it dry to further inhibit bacterial growth. In other words, bacteria love moist areas. And moistness is where they thrive. And so this is a reason why I said, you know, don't dry it like this. Because you don't know. It might not be getting dry down here. So either you want to dry it, you know, if you have a dryer, a rack, uh, put it this way. Or lay it flat. And then at, at the middle of it, flip it over to the side like this. Do a 180. So that way the other side, if there's anything captured there, it'll 
it'll help. So, and you could be pretty creative too. What I used to do is I used to get like a rubber band and I had these, um, my kitchen uh, cabinet had these pulley thingies and I used to kind of hang them on there. So I had like brushes like them. <laughs> my husband was like, what the heck? What is that? You know, when we first got married, it's like, what is all that? It's, it's, it's my brushes, it's drying. So anyway, so uh, anyway, it is what it is. And so, okay, uh, where are we in a, okay, sidetrack. Okay. Um. Okay, I said that part. I'm looking at my um, my outline because I don't want to miss anything, okay? And so, let's see. What else do we have here? I think I had some hints and helpful hints. Um, okay. Ah, helpful suggestions. This I came up with really thinking about it and what, you know, what I do. And so, number one, wash your hands with soap and water before you do your makeup. Okay, just do that. I mean... It's, it's hygienic practice, all right? And also buy lip pencils and eye pencils that you sharpen and not retractable. Sometimes you can't help it because some of my favorite, like my eyebrows, that one is retractable, right? And so, but the thing is, I run out of that thing so fast. I mean, it doesn't last me two months. I mean, maybe a month and it's gone. And so I'm okay with that. But for lip pencils, eyeliners, it's better if you have to sharpen it because when something gets contaminated, you're, you know, you're just, you're sharpening it off, right? So it's good. And then also buy travel or deluxe minis. This is something I recently started doing because I'm not going through all of my stuff, but like my, my, my mascaras and everything now, I'm starting to buy minis because it's more of a chance that I'm going to get through that than the regular size one. Okay. So things that you're not getting through, even, you know, even lipsticks, right? I mean, this is a travel size, you know, for that reason. Okay, and then when using an eyedropper or products, again, I said that earlier, drop it into your hands. Don't touch it to your face. You don't touch it to your hands. Just drop it from a distance and then apply, okay? And then, um, oh, use brushes instead of fingers and eyeshadow palettes. And I know you've heard me say, you know, I really don't like going into this with my fingers. It's not so much because my finger gets dirty. A lot of people probably say, well, why don't you like doing that? Well, now you know, because I don't want, it's like my fingers, if, if by any chance it's, it's got any kind of bacteria on it, think about it. Your palate is a Petri dish. You're just rubbing it in there, right? So really important. And then also make sure to sanitize the palate directly after you use it if you do use your fingers, just in case, okay? Just kill that bacteria a medium, I mean, the growth medium before it can even begin, okay? And also use, and if you can, uh, use synthetic brushes instead of animal hair. And, um, I, okay, I just had to stop and change the battery. And while I was doing that, I actually knocked over my glass of alcohol. It went like all over my floor. I'm like, oh my gosh, but that's okay. You know, at least it's alcohol. You know, it's got, it's gonna kill anything that's down there, so, hmm. So anyway, let me get this done. So as I was saying, I don't know at what point um, I ran out of battery, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I get these last pieces to you. So use synthetic brushes where you can, because not only is it, you know, nicer for animals that we don't take their hair, their fur, but um, also synthetics last longer when you're cleaning and it doesn't have little, you know, pores, or not pores, but you know how hair has little kind of like, if you look at under the microscope where um, it has ridges and it's really hard to clean around the ridges and or through the ridges. And sometimes depending on what kind of animal hair it is, um, you could potentially not get your brush cleaned hundred percent. Get it? So, you know, I am plus synthetics last much longer and, um, and I try to make it a point to make sure that I'm not getting animal hair. And, I, and sometimes I get disappointed because some of the brushes I really want, I find out that they're all animal squirrel hair or whatever. And so, yeah, it is what it is. But anyway, um, I hope you found this useful and please, please, please leave a comment below if you have any questions, okay? Or if you have any other ideas or if you have something um, that you want to know about and um, you want me to demonstrate or whatever or something I might have missed, okay? Because this was a big topic. I could probably split this into two different um, videos and I'm hoping that this is not too, too long, but it's so important for you guys to watch this to the end, okay? And so... Yeah, well, my beautiful wildflowers, 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, my beautiful people out there, why not subscribe and become part of the wildflower family? So, thank you so much for joining me today. And remember, don't sweat the small stuff. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.